The Braves have a need in left field, and the solution for that need may just be Vaughn Grissom. You are locked on Braves. The Daily Atlanta Braves Podcast. Part of the Locked On team every day. Hey, and welcome back to Locked On Braves, part of Locked On Sports Atlanta, where we cover your favorite Atlanta sports teams each and every day. I am your host, Jake Mastriani. You can follow me on social media at Shortstop Ball. Also, make sure you check out my written work over at Bravestoday.com. I'm writing an article just about every weekday over there, as well as doing this podcast here. So, a lot of content coming your way from me this offseason. Make sure you follow. The podcast on social media at locked on underscore Braves. And then any questions, comments, or feedback that you have for the podcast, try to make this as interactive with you on a Friday. So get ready to submit the question, your questions for that. Also, a lot of you have been asking for an Otani episode unless something major happens, which it's the off season. At any point, if something major happens, we'll jump all over that and cover it. But assuming nothing major happens on Wednesday, we will have an Otani episode on Wednesday night. So be on the lookout for that. We'll discuss the realistic possibility of the Braves signing him. Would it be a smart thing to do? Obviously, getting Shohei Otani would be pretty smart, but would spending the money be very smart? We'll discuss that on Wednesday's podcast. If you're new on YouTube, hit that subscribe button. If you're watching there, hit that thumbs up button as well to help support the show and grow the channel so we get more people in here interacting, talking about Braves baseball because that's what we love to do. That's why you're here, and that's what we will be doing all offseason long, getting geared up for 2024. Again, thank you to all the everydayers out there. Thanks to those who are joining live. I pretty much do all of these offseason episodes live. we got Braves in 01, Jeffrey Humphreys, Magic Eclipse, Justin Payne, Barracuda, M. Pat, Michael Ritchie, Brennan, and Doc's Cards all in here with me right now. Thank you so much for joining this live episode. And today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Make every moment more. Right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 money line bet. That's $150 if your team wins. Visit FanDuel.com slash locked on to get started. And getting started with today's episode we're going to be talking about Vaughn Grissom and a lot of talk lately about if he is going to be an option in left field. Will he be an option in left field? And we got some quotes from Alex Anthopoulos that you know suggested that could be a possibility. So I want to talk about that, get into a little bit of the news from Tuesday. It wasn't a lot there. The Braves ended up not protecting anybody on the Rule 5 draft. We'll talk about who they could potentially lose in the draft because of that. And a little bit of trade. That went down on Tuesday. The Braves finally ended the Yanni Torinos era. We'll discuss that move as well. We got Step said in here, says longtime listener, first time commenter. Thanks for being in the chat here with me live. Let's get into this discussion here about Von Grissom being the option in left field. And is that the right move for the Braves? A lot of this being sparked by an article in The Athletic by David O'Brien and others who have you know, since reported similar things, saying that the Braves are finally open to trying Von Grissom in left field. And I say finally because this is something I know a lot of fans have been asking for a while now is why not try him out in left field? You know left field's a bit of a question mark. You knew it was a possibility there was going to be a hole there this offseason. Why not try? Von Grissom in left field. And I understand those comments in that discussion that we have had on here multiple times. I also understand the reason why the Braves would hold off on making that move. I think there's a couple of reasons why, which again, we have discussed on here. I think moving him off shortstop, if you are going to trade Von Grissom, maybe hurts his value a little bit because it tells other teams that the Braves don't think he can play the shortstop position. And so that hurts his trade value a little bit. As I, again, said numerous times this past year, he is still very young, and I'm not ready to give up on him being a shortstop. And I think the Braves did the right thing in giving him every opportunity to prove that he can be a shortstop. And from everything I've heard, he did make improvements defensively throughout the year. So who knows? 
maybe they still have plans for him to be the future shortstop of the team someday. But at this point, I feel like they're very comfortable with Orlando Arcia there, possibly Nicky Lopez backing up. So if you want to try to find ways to get Von Grissom some at-bats and find a spot for him on the field, left field is where you're going to have to work him in at the moment. I'm going to read a couple of quotes from this article in The Athletic, both of these quotes from Alex Anthopoulos. He says, playing Grissom in left field is a scenario because he's a tremendous athlete. We did it with Austin Riley, who played left field as a rookie in 2019. Guys like Chipper Jones did the same thing, so that could happen. We're not committed to that, but the fact that he can play short, second, and third, we think he's absolutely athletic enough if we want to put him out in the outfield. We'll pause and talk about that quote for just a second. Yes, we've seen the Braves put Austin Riley out there. We've seen the Braves try William Contreras out there. We saw the Braves try Orlando RC out there. None of those were great. So to say even Chipper Jones, to a degree, wasn't particularly great out in left field. So making those comparisons doesn't make me feel great about it. The only difference I think you could say between Grissom and those guys is that I would hope Grissom is more athletic than an Austin Riley and Orlando Arcia or a William Contreras, that you know his athleticism will give him the ability to handle that position better than the other guys that they have tried there. And I think that will. I think it will. I think he is more athletic than those guys and can make that transition a little bit easier. That being said, it is still an unknown. And again, I think just making the comparisons that Riley did it, Chipper Jones did it, I don't, I don't think that's a great comparison to make because I don't think either one of those guys made that trans transition look all that smooth. So it's not just you know a case of putting Von Grissom out there looks like an athletic guy, he'll be fine. I don't think it's that easy to say that. Another quote from Alex Anthopoulos says, he, Von Grissom, is open to playing anywhere. He's expressed that to us. We want to make sure to continue to get him reps in the infield. That's something that we've talked about, just being able to move him around all over the place to get his bat in the lineup. Look, he had an unbelievable year at Gwinnett. If you look at the last two months, I think it was an OPS of 1,100. So, we are now talking about ways to get him into the lineup. Part of that quote I really want to touch on that I love to hear is the fact that, you know, working him into different positions, that's something that they've talked about and just being able to move him around all over the place to get his bat in the lineup. That's what I've been screaming for over a year now. Again, I understood the decision to continue to let him work at shortstop and work on things defensively so that he could potentially be that shortstop of the future for the Braves. Cause I think they're still looking for that shortstop. You know, Arcia is fine. Uh, but as Garrett says in the comment section, Arcia is not long-term and the Braves in my mind still do not have that long-term shortstop in the system. So again, I understand the decision to let Von Grissom try to continue to develop and work you know, into that or see if he could work into that spot. But what I have been asking for, for again, over a year as we've had this conversation, what do you do with Von Grissom? How do you get his bat in the lineup? I have been begging for a Chris Taylor type role. And this comment from Alex Antopoulos saying, you know, being able to move him around all over the place, get his bat in the lineup. It's exactly what I've been asking for. Whether Arcia is the long-term shortstop or not, and I don't believe that he is, even in 2024, you know, you do have Nicky Lopez who could spell Arcia, but you know, you can find ways to get Grissom into the lineup. You could spell Arcia at shortstop. You could spell Ozzy at second base, who had who's had his own injury concerns the last couple of years. And obviously you can play him in left field. So I think there's opportunities to get Von Grissom in the lineup. You know, you got the DH as well, which look, Marcelo Zuna's coming off an amazing season, but you know, if you're asking me if I'm a bit skeptical, if he could repeat that next year, yeah, it certainly could. I mean, we have the two-plus years of history before that and tell you that you know he wasn't a very good hitter. And I'm not saying he, he's going to fall flat on his face. He obviously had a, a long stretch of success in 2023 and has had success before at the big league level. But I'm just saying there are, there are ways to get Von Grissom's bat into the lineup. So this idea of working him into left field and just opening that up as another possibility to get his bat in the lineup, it 
I'm glad to see that we finally have gotten to this point because, again, I think the bat will play. And I'll talk about that here more in a second. I want to get into some of the numbers and what Von Grissom could look like in left field. We'll get into that more here next. Get into the action this NFL season with FanDuel, America's number one sports book. Right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 money line bet. It's $150 if your team wins. If you've been thinking about joining FanDuel, there's no better time to get in on the action right now. You got the NFL season going on, NBA, NHL, a lot of sports action happening right now the app is so easy to use and they have a wide range of betting options including spreads player props over unders and more you want to get in on some futures bets for mlb the braves are currently the favorite to win the world series you're looking for a long shot your hawks are currently plus 9500 to win the nba finals saw that they did win on tuesday night in the in-season tournament whatever that is uh, the Hawks got a win over the Pistons on Tuesday night. So, again, maybe you're feeling lucky. You want to go all in on them. You got some pretty tough odds there to overcome, but could pay out in the end. So visit FanDuel.com slash LockedOn to get in on all the action. Again, that's FanDuel.com slash LockedOn. Also visit FanDuel.com slash PlaySafe for tools and resources to help you stay in control of the way you play. FanDuel, official partner of the NFL. Getting back into the Vaughn Grissom discussion, I want to take a look at what he could look like in left field for the Braves in 2024 and potentially beyond. It is not your typical corner outfielder that profiles for 30 home run you know, potential. Braves don't need that out of their left fielder. With the lineup that they have, and they have plenty of 20, 30 home run bats in their lineup, so you don't necessarily need that from your left fielder. They did get 20-plus home runs from Eddie Rosario in the left field spot last year. But again, this lineup is powerful enough that you can handle having maybe a little bit less power in left field because he is going to give you less power than what you likely would have gotten with Eddie Rosario or somebody else that you might be able to acquire on the open market. You look at the 2023 numbers for Von Grissom at AAA, they're absolutely absurd. Slash 330, 419, 501, 36 doubles. He did only have eight home runs, but 36 doubles. That was a Gwinnett uh, record, single season record. He also had 13 stolen bases. So it gives you a little bit of that speed. And in 64 big league games, he's slashing 287, 339, 407 slug, nine doubles, five homers, and five stolen bases. So even in a short sample size, He's been pretty solid at the big league level as well. If you're asking me to project Von Grissom and what he could look like at the big league level, you know, playing every day in left field or moving him around, you know, say he gets 130, 140 games, I'd probably lean more towards 130 mark, but I think he's somebody that can hit 270, a 330 on base, 10 to 15 homers, you know, double digit stolen bases. I mean, that's solid. It's not an all star. But that's a, a solid player, and I think Von Grissom can do that. One thing he hasn't done at the MLB level, and I went back, you can look at, you know, in Baseball Savant, you can uh, go down to AAA uh, level. You have to go by game by game, and you can look at X velocities from AAA games. And I monitored that throughout the season for Von Grissom, and it was solid, you know, exit velocities. It's not the max exit velocity, but he's consistently putting up, you know, 88, 92 mile per hour exit velocities but we haven't seen that consistently at the big league level you know an average exit velocity of just 85.2 percent a hard hit percentage of 34.9 percent is not great and that's what we've seen from Vaughn so far at the big league level I think there's a room for a little bit more from him um, he's not somebody that like I said is going to have the huge power he's not going to have a huge you know, impact on the baseball, be a high exit velocity guy. But I do think there's a little bit more than what we've seen so far at the big league level. One thing he does well is he typically puts the ball in play. An 18% strikeout rate so far at the major league level. Again, I think that's something that could come down even more as he gets more adjusted to big league pitching. He is somebody that, again, is going to put the ball in play. He may chase outside of the zone, but again, he's not somebody that swings and misses a lot. 
And I was looking at some of the you know very short sample size that we have here from Von Grissom at the big league level, and he comes up pretty clutch with runners on base, with runners in scoring position and 47 at bats. He's hitting 298 with a 352 on base percentage and 20 RBI, four walks to 10 strikeouts with runners on third and less than two outs, a situation that you know a lot of Braves hitters struggle in. Von Grissom has nine RBI and 11 at-bats with runners on third and less than two outs, just two strikeouts, four hits in those 11 at-bats. So, again, putting the ball in play in pressure situations, he's been really good out, two, been really good at two outs with runners in scoring position. In 21 at-bats, he had seven hits, two walks, four strikeouts, eight runs batted in. And then in late and close situations, over 32 at bats, he's hitting 406. That's 13 hits, four walks, and eight strikeouts, and 32 at bats in what baseball reference categorizes as late and close situations. So, again, very short sample size that we're working with at the big league level here. But Von Grissom has done a great job, you know, putting the ball in play, coming up in clutch situations. And I think that would be a benefit to having this Braves lineup that has so much power to have another bat or to have a bat in there. You know, that's more of a contact type of hitter. I, I think you put him in the nine spot in this Braves order, you know, allow him to keep the line moving, get on base for the top of the order, like Michael Harris and even Von Grissom when he was up the year before have done. I, I think that's a perfect spot for Von Grissom where you just kind of put him in that ninth spot, you know, let him work his way on base with that 330, maybe even more on base percentage, get on base in front of Acuna, has a little bit of speed that allows you to move Michael Harris up into more of an impact spot up in the batting order as well. So I think that could work out very well for the Braves. You know, what about the defense? Again, that is the question. Does he have enough time? You know, whether or not he works there in the Puerto Rican League, which also in that article from David O'Brien said he's going to start there in December, playing there in December. So we'll see, you know, what positions he plays over there. But you know, let's assume that they have him playing left field during the Puerto Rican Winter League, and then they come into spring training and they're working with him every day in left field. Is that a is that enough time that you feel comfortable putting him out there? You know, to start the season. Look, they've done it on <laughs> on shorter time frames with Arcia and Contreras and even Riley. I, I believe Riley. You know, as soon as he came up, they just took him in left field because that's where they you know had an open spot. So is that enough time for Grissom to get comfortable out there? I think it would be, again, especially considering how quickly they've moved on other guys in the past to get it out there. But, uh, you know, we're not expecting gold glove level of defense out there, even though Eddie Rosario was a gold glove finalist. In my opinion, I don't really think we were getting gold glove defense out there anyway. But, you know, that is a, a bit of a question mark. The other part of this is going with Grissom in left field, it does – open up a little bit more money if you're not going to spend that to go out and get a free agent. And I think that's part of this too. I've said on here multiple times, I do not love the outfield free agent options. You know, I don't love spending big on Cody Bellinger coming off a, a rebound year. Uh, I don't love spending big on Tay Oscar Hernandez, you know, even Lourdes Gurriel. I don't see him as much of an upgrade over an Eddie Rosario, you know, and Jock Peterson's a, a DH left-handed, you know, platoon bat. You are going to face more righties, but I just don't love the options out there in the outfield. So again, maybe you just punt on, I don't want to say punt, but maybe you just decide to give Von Grissom that shot in left field. You essentially save, you know, 8 million or whatever you might've had allocated towards left field. And maybe you spend that to go get a Sonny Gray and Eduardo Rodriguez or, or maybe an Aaron Nola. So it does, possibly open up some other options if they feel like Von Grissom is the answer in left field. Now, as Ecuadorman says here, this team is too good just to hope that he can play left field. And I agree with that. And if you're asking me today, do I think he's going to be the starting left field on opening day? I would, I would say no. I would lean towards no. We'll see how the offense, how the offseason plays out. I still think they're going to be looking for opportunities for guys that they could bring in. Look, even if the, in the end you have to go with a platoon situation, you know, you go and get an, an Adam Duvall uh, and, you know, a left handed hitter, maybe a Jock Peterson, although I think he might be a little bit expensive, but whatever route you may want to go, 
you still could go out and get two guys to platoon in that spot for you know not a ton of money probably you know 10 to 15 million dollars then you get two guys to help fill that spot and kind of you know just have another stop gap year while we continue to search for that left fielder of the future you know in my ideal offseason i said i would trade for a young left fielder look for where there is a log jam somewhere at another team like the Orioles were the team that I referenced that has a bunch of young guys coming up where either maybe you could try to target some of their young players or go over some of their veterans like, you know, Anthony Santander or uh, Cedric Mullins. You know, I think there are, there are some opportunities on the trade market, but you can't count on that. So I do believe the Rays are still going to be looking to find that left fielder this off season. And I just think if nothing works out and they can't find anything else, then I think they pivot to Von Grissom, you know, possibly being that left fielder. I still, I still can't imagine that they go into the season where Von Grissom is just the answer in left field. I think that's just a little bit too risky um, for a team. Again, as Ecuadorman said, that is too good, ready to win a world series to just hope that he's going to be your left fielder. I do like the bat, and I do think they need to find ways to get him in the lineup, and I think left field is certainly an option to do so. But to just hand him the reins in left field as your everyday left fielder for a guy who's never played the position seems a bit risky in my opinion. But we'll see which way the Braves decide to go. Um, but again, I think they're still, they'll still be looking for options to find somebody as an everyday left fielder or pl- perhaps you know even some sort of platoon situation. Uh, I don't I don't believe in platooning Von Grissom in left field. I know some have suggested that, but if you're calling up Von Grissom, and I said this all last year, you know, when there are times people were saying bring up Von Grissom, I, I don't bring him up and just sit him on the bench. I think he's a good enough hitter that if you're bringing him up, you got to get him get him at bats every day. And if you bring in a platoon partner for him, you're going to face more righties than lefties, and so he's going to be sitting on the bench a lot. So I don't agree with platooning him i think if you bring him up you start him and left a couple of days a week you start him at shortstop a day here second base a day there you find ways to get him in the lineup three four or five times a week so that's you know what i would do with it and I, I you know we'll see how the braves decide to play it but it sounds like they're at least open to the idea of trying von grissom in left field and that being a potential option And I think that's good to hear from the standpoint of, yes, you have a good bat who is ready for the big leagues. Let's find ways to get him some at-bats, get him in the lineup, and have him there as an option just in case nothing works out in left field. So we'll see what happens with Von Grissom. Very interested to see where he plays in the Winter League over there in Puerto Rico. We'll certainly be watching that. I don't know if we'll get any video of it, but certainly we'll be keeping an eye on what position that they have him playing. All right, next we'll get into some of the news from Tuesday. Not a lot to talk about as the Braves didn't protect anybody in the Rule 5 draft, but they did make a little bit of a trade acquiring a reliever and getting rid of Yanni Torinos. It actually happened. We'll discuss that next. As mentioned, the Braves decided not to add anybody to the 40-man roster, or rather didn't add any prospects to the 40-man roster in order to protect them from the Rule 5 draft. A couple of names we talked about that the Braves may want to protect, Luis Diavila and Jesse Franklin. Those are two guys that I thought might get added if anybody was going to, but the Braves decided not to. Just as a reminder, anybody who's taken in the MLB portion of the Rule 5 draft, they must be on that team's active roster for the entire season or else they have to give them back to uh, the team that they took them from. So got to keep that in mind when talking about some of these players. Now, Diavila did reach AAA. He made just one start there last year, but in 26 starts between uh, AA and AAA, he posted a 3.26 ERA, had a 1.323 whip, so not fantastic, but just 103 hits allowed in 127 innings with 128 strikeouts, but a walk per nine of 4.6. So certainly has some command issues there, but some good numbers otherwise for Luis Diavila. You know, we'll see if he gets taken. If not, you know, could have the potential of you know being some more depth for the Braves. I think he's pretty far on down the depth chart right now um, for the Braves starting pitching, but 
certainly would add some more depth in the system for the Atlanta Braves if he's not selected in the re- Rule 5 draft. And I, I don't think that he will be. Jesse Franklin is somebody that, again, I thought just because with the need of outfielders that they might add him to the 40-man roster, but he missed you know a good portion of uh, both the last two seasons, actually, as he recovered from Tommy John surgery. And so, you know, he's been out a lot, only played at double A this past year. Wasn't particularly great there, slash 232, 315, 419, but pretty good numbers against righties. He's somebody I've talked about for a while now that I think could be, you know, a left handed bench bat of the future. You know, if all things work out, possibly a Jock Peterson type. Uh, you know, actually plays pretty good defense in the outfield, has some solid pop as well. 15 home runs this past year at double a and just 94 games played so has a good bit of power could be a platoon type hitter at the big league level again because he just doesn't have a lot of at bats at the upper levels under his belt i doubt he's someone that gets taken in the rule five draft so i don't think they'll lose either one of those guys but those would be one of the two players that could likely the braves could likely lose in the rule five draft now, the other news on Tuesday, the Braves claimed right-handed pitcher Penn Murphy off waivers. I think I said it was a trade earlier, so I apologize. Um, but they did they claimed him off waivers from the New York Mets, and they designated Yanni Torinos for assignment. And I got no ill will towards Yanni Torinos, nothing against him. It was just a very frustrating five-game stretch to watch a guy who came in that Tampa Bay let go. And if Tampa Bay lets somebody go, you should probably know that there are reasons why, although Ben Heller had a good little run with the Braves. But the Torino's experiment was not fun for Braves fans, and it seemed like the Braves just were never going to let him go. Uh, But now they finally do, and they get a guy in Murphy that, when healthy, has been really good. He has a 2.70 ERA, 0.97 whip in 83 and a third innings the last two years with the Mariners, a 27% strikeout rate. Doesn't throw particularly hard, but features a big sweeping breaking ball, almost from a sidearm angle. Had elbow surgery in July, so he will be out until mid-season 2024. So this isn't somebody that's going to impact the pitching staff right away. But he is, you know, could be a very solid quality bullpen arm when he gets back healthy. So a good move here for the Braves. Look, it is that time of year that he could be on this roster for a week and they might acquire somebody else and he might be the next man gone. You're going to see a lot of players shuffling through teams this time of year. Uh, But for now, Murphy is on here. And again, he gets back healthy, pitches like he did before the injury. He was a really good reliever for the Mariners. So might be a really solid, sneaky pickup here for Alex Anthopoulos in the Braves coming up this next season. All right, check in at the comment section real quick, looking at some of the comments out here. Joe Me says, Jake, I love Vaughn. You know that, but I doubt he is the plan right now. I'm not convinced that August and September Arcia aren't the real Orlando. How long does he have to tank before the kid gets a chance? And that's kind of where that's kind of where I am as well. I, I don't I don't believe in Orlando Arcia as the full-time shortstop of the future. And I don't think many people in here do. I think he's going to be given a chance to go back there. And I wrote this the other day on Braves today. I think you put RC out there at shortstop and I think he'll be fine. I think he'll be, you know, an average to slightly below average hitter, which is kind of what he was in the end this year. I know he had the great first half and the bad second half, and it all kind of evened out into what RC, I think ultimately is, which a, it just, a, a, you know, average to slightly below average offensive player and a you know average to slightly above average defensive player. Uh, I believe it was he ranked eighth in arm strength from shortstop and 12th in outs above average. I mean, he's solid. He made the plays he needed to. Doesn't have a lot of range. A very you know solid arm defensively. He's not somebody that's going to kill you with the rest of the lineup that the Braves have. But you know, talking about Von Grissom, and if you do stick him in left field, Suddenly you got a bottom of the order in Arcia and Grissom that aren't, you know, great, you know, big bats at the bottom of your order, which is not the case in most lineups. Most lineups don't have, you know, huge all-star type bats at the bottom of their order. But then you're looking at some, you know, question marks at the bottom of the lineup. So 
yes, I don't know how long the leash is for Arcia. I would imagine he's earned a pretty good leash here, but even my buddy Lindsey Crosby, who also writes over at Braves today, he wrote about possibly Nicky Lopez taking some time from Orlando Arcia this year as well. So I, I don't think anybody, even the Braves, are resigned to the fact that Orlando Arcia just is the guy at shortstop. Um, but I think Von Grissom you know, could work his way into that discussion. Again, everything I've heard is that he had made strides defensively this past year, you know, at triple a, um, a good question. Mark Riggs brings up here. What arm, what kind of arm does Grissom have mass boost saying, you know, maybe ar average arm. I don't, it's not better than RC is. I'll say that. Um, it's not a great arm. Uh, he probably fits more profiles more at second base. Uh, with his arm and, again, even with the, the, the range or rather lack of range that he has. But, again, I haven't watched a lot of Von Grissom defensively this past year to really give you um, you know, great analysis on what he looks like at this point. But, again, from people that I have talked to that did watch him on a daily basis, there were you know, stark improvements, visible improvements you could see for him defensively. Question here from uh, Barracuda says, hey, Jake, maybe this is a better question for tomorrow, but if a genie gave you the ability to sign either Shohei or Soto to a massive deal, who do you pick? I take Soto, but want to hear your thoughts. I'm taking Shohei. Um, I mean, you're talking about player like we've never seen before. Um, there are questions, and I think some people – maybe don't realize this, that Shohei's not going to pitch at all in 2024 and maybe slow coming back in 2025. But even without the arm, I mean, he's still a really good bat. I think we probably see him run a little bit more uh, this coming up season. I mean, you're talking about a guy that I think could be a 30-30 player in 2024. Um, so I, I take Otani. Again, I just think the impact that he has, you know, power-wise, speed-wise, and then if he comes back on the mound, anything like he was before, that's a slam dunk for me that you take Otani over Soto. I don't think either are going to happen, although Buster only was out, went on a limb saying that uh, the Padres are 100% going to trade Soto. So that'll be something to monitor this offseason. And Brennan Gandy saying, no way Soto comes to the Braves. More likely we get Otani. I don't think any either happens, but. Uh, I would definitely take Otani over Soto. Julie C says, do you keep Lopez? I think the Braves do for now. The non-tender deadline is coming up this Friday, so we ha might have some more news later in the week, some possible non-tender options. We talked about those on a previous episode. You want to go back and give that a listen. Michael Soroka is a name to watch there if the Braves decide to tender him a contract. The 40-man roster is full at the moment, um, so we'll see. Again, that'll happen on Friday is when that non-tender deadline comes up. All right, that will be it for this episode of Locked On Braves. Thanks so much for the subscriptions. Thanks for tuning in, whether live or on replay. Really do appreciate all the support here at Locked On Braves. Make sure that you are subscribed. Getting really close to 7,600 subscribers there. Make sure that you follow, follow us on social media at shortstop, shortstop Ball and at Locked On underscore Braves. Make sure that you rate, review, and subscribe to the Lockdown Braves podcast wherever you get your podcast, and we will talk to you next time.